Hi, my name is Matthias Böhm, and it's my pleasure to present on behalf of the entire consortium, DAFNE, as an open and extensible system infrastructure for integrated data analysis pipelines. Now, so integrated data analysis pipelines are complex workflows of data management and query processing, high performance computing, and various kinds of simulations, as well as training and scoring multiple machine learning models. Developing and deploying those integrated data analysis pipelines is, however, still a very painful process. It involves orchestrating different systems and libraries, data and file exchange between those different systems, but also integrating different development teams, programming models, and resource managers, which ultimately lead to uh, a spatial temporal underutilization of existing cluster infrastructure and heterogeneous hardware. Interestingly, data management, ML, and HPC share many compilation and runtime techniques, and the underlying uh, cluster hardware is converging as well. Uh, together, integrated data analysis pipelines stress every aspect of the underlying hardware, and thus are naturally affected by emerging hardware challenges, such as the end of the NOT scaling, the end of Moore's law, and speed up limitations given by Anders law. Uh, together, these challenges lead to increasing specialization in terms of data representations, so dense, sparse, compressed, but also data placement, local versus distributed data and operations, and various kinds of hardware accelerators with different trade-offs of reconfigurability, energy efficiency, and performance. Recently, uh, also specialized data types have been introduced, and together this specialization poses additional uh, deployment challenges. Uh, so it becomes almost unsustainable uh, to really tune complex integrated data analysis pipelines for heterogeneous hardware. And that's exactly where Daphne comes into the picture. Our overall objective is to build an open and extensible system infrastructure for integrated data analysis pipelines that can utilize heterogeneous hardware. In order to keep us grounded, we are working with a couple of real world use cases. One example is a DLR local climate zone classification, where we uh, take the Sentinel 1 and 2 Earth observation data sets and uh, after pre processing, try to build uh, classifiers for image patches uh, to predict surface cover, which in turn is fed into urbanization research and local climate zone models. Additional use cases include semiconductor manufacturing and vehicle development, but in general, we see a wide variety of different use cases that rely on ML assisted simulations, data cleaning augmentation, but also interwoven exploratory query processing and data cleaning. In order to better support those use cases, we are building the Daphne system infrastructure and for extensibility and heterogeneous hardware, we are basing this uh, system architecture on MLIR as the multi-level intermediate representation that acts as a, uh, as a library of compiler infrastructure, allowing us to reuse optimization passes and augment new optimizations. And with that, uh, making it more cost effective to build new domain specific languages such as uh, Daphne DSL. On top of Daphne DSL, we are providing an additional Python API with lazy evaluation in order to seamlessly fit into existing workflows. In contrast to most existing MLR dialects that directly compile to LVM, uh, we also utilize uh, tuned libraries and hand coded uh, kernels uh, for different devices such as CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and computational storage. Uh, the core of the Daphne system architecture is a vectorized execution engine uh, that allows us to execute fused operator pipelines. Additional major goals include uh, an extensible infrastructure that, uh, where we aim to integrate additional MLIR dialects, for example, for new hardware. And through an extension catalog, we aim to uh, allow people to add new data types, kernels, and even scheduling algorithms. Furthermore, in order to uh, simplify experimentation with newer kernels and data types, uh, we want to allow sideways access into this optimizing uh, uh, compilation chain, uh, allowing people uh, in the sense of additional constraints to force certain data formats, uh, data and operator placement. At language level, we make the observation that in many primitives in data management, uh, HPC and ML can be expressed as coarse grained frame and matrix operations. Uh, 
But at the same time, we want to provide data independence. So we are exposing abstract data types. At DSL level, we are then uh, providing various basic built-in functions, including relational and linear algebra, uh, but also higher level built-in functions, such as executing SQL queries on registered data frames. In order to build a hierarchy of composite primitives for machine learning algorithms and various pre-processing primitives, uh, we are providing the mechanics for typed and untyped functions. On the right, you see an example of such an untyped function for, connecting, uh, for computing the connected components of a graph given as a sparse matrix. Now, those functions are then exposed in our Python API and inspired by Dask and PySpark. Uh, we rely on lazy evaluation and on explicit compute, construct these L snippets, and then go through the exact same optimizing compilation chain. At data level, we are currently supporting matrices, frames, and scalars. In the future, we want to uh, extend that by tensors and lists for grouping objects and multiple value types, uh, currently mostly integers and floating point representations of different width. For local matrices, we already support dense and sparse matrix representations that internally have pointers uh, to allocate arrays on different devices, allowing us in a very flexible manner to do lazy data transfer on demand. For distributed and multi-device data, we are relying on two abstractions. Uh, one inspired by data parallel frameworks is a collection of fixed size tiles. But we are also supporting federated matrices where the coordinator holds metadata aware of which disjoint part of our overall matrix is located and stored as a single matrix, allowing for direct access, uh, better representation of ultra sparse uh, uh, data and uh, more effective distributed multi-device operations. The heart of our uh, infrastructure are then the individual kernels and executing those kernels efficiently. Individual hand-coded kernels can provide very good performance, uh, but have uh, essentially synchronization barriers at the end of uh, each operator uh, and uh, might need to materialize intermediate, large intermediates in memory. In order to overcome those challenges, we are uh, providing additional optimization passes that fuse entire uh, operators uh, and then execute them in a vectorized manner where we create tasks, for example, for row ranges, uh, enqueue those tasks into a task queue, and the multi-threaded workers then pull from this task queue and uh, execute an entire chain of operators. And because we only work on a slice of the input, main input uh, matrix, uh, this naturally affects the size of intermediates as well. At the same time, it allows us uh, to very seamlessly integrate additional workers for heterogeneous hardware devices. Additional details for efficient uh, vectorized execution include uh, zero copy input slicing, where uh, we are not copying those individual slices, but create views and all the individual kernels then directly operate on those views. Uh, for the individual operations, we are reusing our single threaded kernels, uh, which naturally uh, also supports, for example, sparse intermediates in fused operator pipelines. Furthermore, uh, this vectorized engine gives us a very fine grained control of task sizes, allowing us to plug in scheduling algorithms, but also data bindings of the actual fused pipeline in order to uh, utilize, for example, cache conscious uh, uh, blocked matrix multiply operators uh, that uh, can be more efficient on entire tiles compared to individual rows. Uh, furthermore, it allows us to nicely integrate computational storage as well. Uh, so the DLR uh, scoring scenario uh, would read FP32 data, uh, uh, but quantizes it into uint8 uh, for the actual scoring pipeline. Uh, those operations can be pushed down into computational storage and then via task queues and uh, connected fused operator pipelines nicely be integrated uh, such that we can deal with uh, buffers in an efficient manner. Our initial experiments were ran on a single node with two Intel goals, uh, which also had a T4 GPU, and very recently we also added a Stratix FPGA. The first pipeline relies on the TPCH uh, scale factor 10 uh, input data, uh, performs a query, a group join with additional predicates on customers and orders, constructing features per customer, and then training linear regression models uh, directly in, in one process. Uh, 
We compare with MoniDB, Pandas, and DuckDB in single-threaded execution, and we see that for this scenario, mostly query processing is dominating, uh, plus in some systems, the startup time, and over different uh, selectivities of the predicates, we see a very competitive query processing performance in single-threaded execution. Similarly, for the DLR scoring use case, uh, we see that uh, ResNet 20 scoring on GPU is also, in comparison with TensorFlow, uh, offers very competitive performance, but it's not uh, the actual scoring is not the core bottleneck, but the data ingestion, how fast we can actually consume the data and read it in. Here, the single-threaded reader in Daphne is already competitive to single-threaded read in SystemDS and TensorFlow, uh, but multi-threaded uh, readers in SystemDS show additional uh, improvements for multi-threaded read, but also multi-device reads. Additional micro-benchmarks with linear regression and varying sizes and vectorization, again compared with TensorFlow, uh, show that single-threaded Daphne operations are for both linear regression and k-means clustering already very competitive, and we get up to a 3x end-to-end -end, uh, speed up uh, by applying our vectorized uh, multi-threading. There are plenty of ongoing experiments with FPGA kernels, uh, hybrid vectorized pipelines, distributed runtimes, and in general sparse operations. So the current status is that uh, we defined the overall system architecture and we are building an MLIR based compiler and runtime and we believe the initial results are very promising. Finally, it's my pleasure to announce uh, that uh, we intend to open source Daphne by the end of March 2022 under Apache v2 license and we're intending to build a very inclusive community. Thank you so much.